never pin this down, but okay. Good. Thank you very much. So my name is Lucilla Spini. I'm one of the speakers of the after lunch session. I'm sure you had a good lunch, right? Yes, so in Italian, I'm Italian, I'm from Florence, Italy, I actually used to work here five years ago. So if you see me arguing people in the hallway like this, don't get scared, uh, it's just for my colleagues. Uh, in Italian, we have a word for this time of the day after lunch, and these feelings of like little bit of tiredness and things is, is abbiocco. There are only a few cultures that have this word, actually. And uh, it's sort of this sort of nice and calm and easiness and things. So my job is to wake you up again and uh, to give you some information what's next. So first allow me to introduce myself. So I work at the International Science Council, which some of you may remember ICSU. Are some people who remember ICSU? You're showing your age here? Careful. Okay. So the International Science Council uh, is the product of the merger of ICSU with the International Social Science Council. So it represents the overall community of sciences, including natural and social science, and this is very important. I'm here representing the president, Professor Daya Reddy, and the CEO, uh, Dr. Haida Ackman, who could not be here to, to close this, uh, this meeting, but they send their greetings. And I'm gonna give you some, some introduction on, uh, on maybe to start thinking about what's next in the project. But first of all, I want to start with, um, with a personal reflection before I go into an institutional, uh, you know, put my institutional hat. With this quote, which is attributed by Gandhi, but apparently there's a lot of discussion on this, but I like to think that it's by Gandhi anyway. Be the change you wish to see in the world. Because I think this is also a moment after you, you've been through an amazing witcher, which I'm very sorry to have missed actually from hearing what you, what you just said. Um, also to have a personal reflection on how this journey through this process and through this week has actually changed your way you're actually doing science, conducting research, advising students and so on. So take some time to really acknowledge the journey that you've been in uh, because it's important because every individual's count. But so today I'm going to give you other flavors on, on other international activities, priorities, that maybe can actually upscale what you're already doing at the individual level, but the recommendation of the project are gonna have an uptake in, in different fora, so as to make sure that this is the end of the project, of the three years of the project, is actually the beginning of really transformative action. So, on the basis of my experience in uh, working in international science for more than 15 years, including UNESCO, TWAS upstairs and IEP, the Interacademy Partnership, but also the United Nations University and so on. And as a biological anthropologist, um, which I, I focus quite a lot on gender equality, both in human and non-human primates, um, I would like to give you an overview of some of the activities. I'm gonna start with some congratulations first, because it's also time for celebration. Then I'm going to give you an overview of the international priority landscape related to your project, to the recommendation, to make sure that they are built at the international level, because you've been an amazing international community working on these issues. And then I'm going to bring it to the International Science Council Action Plan, which is our new action plan, which includes activities on gender equality and others, which can also be linked to the recommendation and to future activities of this community. But before I do this, I need to ask for your help on something. There is a birthday today being celebrated by Vesi. Vesi, can you stand up? Happy birthday. <laughs> if this was embarrassing, blame my colleague over there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Buon compleanno, that's the Italian version. Okay, so now we could start. <laughs> all right, so congratulations. Congratulations of all the different types of results, which I like to call it the gender gaps, because there are many. We've seen, uh, even this morning, we've seen the, the publication, the peer review, continuity in studies, the difference in discipline or the similarity, the gaps in salaries, which then, you know, sometimes we forget, but they are reflected also the difference in pensions, you know, just 
to put that. But so it's really, it's really a very comprehensive study, not just focusing on one particular issue, but it gives the system approach. Great data and database, and here I would like to highlight that the International Science Council community includes two activities, two initiatives on data, co-data, the Committee on Data, and the World Data System, which provide a lot of training and capacity building on data management, on data science, uh, and also repository issues. So I would, at some point, I think to have a conversation with one of these two bodies, or two bodies, uh, on how to continue the work on the data would, would be an important thing. But also, I want to congratulate for the, I put co-benefits because it looks nice, but I like to call it the side effects, positive side effects of this project. I was, I was lucky enough to be at the inception meeting of this project, uh, opening, I, I do the opening and closing, it's a shame, but anyway. Um, that uh, had an effect on this community, on the International Science Council community. You all, some of you belongs to union, to academies, to other organizations, and there's been sort of this spillover effect of the fact that we needed to start thinking about gender and gender equality a little bit more. I'll give you an example, uh, our committee on space research, which, okay, in the media you see many women astronauts these days, but it's been a long journey to that. Then now the committee on space research, while updating statutes, while updating operation and so on, are focusing more and more on making sure that the gender equality issue is taken into account. And, and I'm sure other unions also present, IUBS is one of, uh, the biological science is one of them, they're they're focusing more and more on the gender equality issue. So I think it's important to recognize also the effect that you had in the community just by the fact of working, asking questions, conducting survey and workshop. This is really um, a ripple effect. Just as an adult, I would like to say the ripple effect that I had on me, uh, thanks to this project, but also working with Gender Insight on the publication Pathway to Success, I took an implicit association test. Anybody has heard of this? Yeah, so there is, uh, you, could, you could test your unconscious bias, your implicit association that you're not aware. So there is one that you could take online on women in science. Apparently, I'm biased. For me, science is women and not the other way around. So you could really, you could really see how you could change the system with, uh, with your project. Okay, the international landscape and priorities. Are you all familiar with Agenda 2030? No? Good, I'm glad, because that otherwise I'm preaching to, to the convert. In uh, 2015, the United Nations came together to define the agenda for sustainable development and uh, sustainable development goals, which needs to be achieved by 2030, and that's why it's called Agenda 2030. And it's really uh, to make sure that this world is a better place, both for people and the planet. So it's built on the three concepts of sustainable development, the economic, the social, and the environmental uh, pillars. So among the different goals, there are 17 goals. There is one, SDG 5, on gender equality, which push as your project, as the conversation you had this week for gender equality. But there are many other, and so there is a clear link between this, process, between this project and uh, the international priority of SDG number 5. But it's important to say that it's not that we just need to put gender equality in one box and just fulfill that. Gender is a cross-cutting issue among many different sustainable development goals and sustainability challenges. I mean, when we talk about climate change, we need to make sure that there is a gender lens applied to these things. And so here, just a couple of uh, sustainable development goals, one on quality education, one on reducing inequality, which are also very relevant to your project. So how can your data also contribute to make sure that country achieve reduced inequalities, quality education for all men and women, and of course, gender equality. Uh, the International Science Council, well at the time, uh, ICSO in 2017, has raised awareness of the project at the United Nations in the high-level political forum on sustainable development, which is the forum that every year in July meets to discuss progress towards the achieving of the sustainable development goals. And we highlighted the fact that uh, the project of the gender gap and the activities that were done at the regional level. So it's very important that we also take into account these United Nations fora 
in terms of reaching out also to government on how we could also change the system at the national level and at the regional level, of course. But not only the United Nations had important priority and, and, and events, but also the international uh, science community. And in particular, I would like to highlight to some, some of you I just mentioned before that 2019 is the International Year of the Periodic Table of Chemical, em chem chemical Elements. And there were many initiatives also targeted uh, to uh, women scientists. So there's a series of international priorities that needs and landscape that needs to be taken into account in also identify way not only to develop recommendation, but then to implement the recommendation. And this is just, um, I'm trying to develop a, a list of all the different uh, activities that we've been encountering also in work at the International Science Council in order to identify how to better connect all this initiative. I think your project has been a particularly important uh, also event to see how different organizations can work together on this cross-cutting issue of gender equality. All right, so upcoming events. So this is what things that happen. Uh, I would like to highlight some of the uh, international events that might also provide opportunity for visibility of your project. We really need to make sure that it's not just about the report that's going to come to the Secretariat at IEC, but really to make sure that everybody knows about the report, everybody knows about the data, and everybody knows that this has been done in three years because chapeau, as they say in French. So here I listed some of the, of the international days that the United Nations celebrate many international days. Uh, there's this almost an international day every day, so in case you're interested, you can check it out. Uh, on uh, today's eight, so Sunday is the World Science Day for Peace and Development, so celebrate your career on that. But these are some of the international uh, days related to women. And in particular, the 11th of February is the International Day of Women and Girls in Science. This is done within the context of UNESCO. So I'm currently also liaising with UNESCO to see whether we could also organize maybe an event together to celebrate and to highlight uh, these activities uh, to UNESCO member states. But also, uh, next year there is a major anniversary, the Beijing Plus 25. Anybody was in the original Beijing platform? There you be, okay, one, two, cool, fantastic. So, and I think you're still involved in the, in the negotiations for, um, for the Commission on Status of Women. So there is an important opportunity at the level of the United Nations uh, to really discuss uh, progress since 1995, but also to discuss the way forward in terms of the Agenda 2030 and the Sustainable Development Goals. So this is something to be taken into account. But also, there are other activities by the international science community, um, including the International Year of Basic Science for Development, which is currently being discussed also within UNESCO. UNESCO has approved, the first step has been approved. And so we're hoping to launch this, thanks to the amazing leadership of IUPAP. And uh, by the way, I, I want to say this, a great gender equality advocate, uh, Michelle Spiro from IUPAP. Uh, the International Year of Basic Science for Development in 2022. And there will be an important component on gender. So this is something that uh, maybe we should look at how to, to bridge into that context. All right, so now I'll take it a little bit closer to home. The International Science and its Action Plan, which is now available on the website. Just, um, now don't go and Google right away. But uh, allow me to, to recall, of course, what's the vision of the International Science Council to advance science as a global public good and its mission to be the global voice of, for science. Hence, it has to be inclusive. The ISC action plan has been done, uh, also has been developed also thanks to a series of consultation with the ISC members and I thanks those of you who are in the audience who have contributed and enabled your union to contribute, and it has four main domains of impact. Science in policy and public discourse, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, the Digital Revolution, 
and the evolution of science and science system. Now, of course, all these domains have a gender component in it. I mean, I just told you that the 2030 agenda, there is a sustainable development goals on gender equality, the importance of science in policy and public discourse with respect also to science communication. We've seen how important also is to look at narratives and how you communicate on things. I mean, if you have a web page with all male scientists, then the drawings that we saw this morning are definitely going to be just male scientists. So uh, there are many different uh, issues. The digital revolution, there's quite a lot of uh, interesting work being, die, being done on gender bias in artificial intelligence. Uh, so I would like you to take on the message that it's important to ensure that we mainstream the gender component across the four domains. But at the same time, I would like to highlight that there is actually you know, a specific gender activities in the fourth domain, the evolution of science and science system, which is the, the domains that look on how the science system can be agile, can be open, in order to meet the challenges of today's societies, which are quite a bit. And in this context, there is a project. In, in our jargon, now we're just 4.1. But it's actually gender equality in science from awareness to transformation. And again, it's important here, from awareness to transformation. It's not just to continue to raise awareness of the issues, but really to make sure also that the recommendations from this project are implemented, because that's what we're interested in. So it's really the anticipated impact is to increase gender equality in global science, to improve sharing and use of evidence for gender policy and programs in scientific institutions and organizations and national, regional, and international level. I hope that rings a bell and connects with also with what you've been doing. I put, after the title, a little parenthesis, which is also in the action plan, is a project for development. Uh, in the sense that this is not some of the projects that are already ongoing in the International Science Council. This is like really something to be developed, to be co-developed with all the interested party. And if you look at the science plan, and in particular there is an, a longer version on the website that explain how we would like to develop uh, this project in terms of really building collaboration across different institutions. So in terms of uh, next step, also related to the development of Project 4.1, we are of course continuing to raise awareness of the, uh, of the issue of gender equality and, and empowerment of women. So some of you might have responded to our blog survey, it wasn't a scientific survey, just to clarify, on how can, how can we diversify scientific prices, so we got a little bit of a, some, some results there, but really to make sure that we always keep the gender equality issue on, uh, on site, that we're not stopping. I think I was talking to somebody at lunch, we was like, we make progress, but we should continue to, to monitor and to, uh, to increase participation. And then uh, we have uh, an upcoming survey, which is gonna be uh, deployed shortly, well, as soon as I go back to the office, um, on uh, women's participation in academy, academies, and gender-related policy and activities of academies. This is coordinated by Gender Insight on behalf of IAP, the Inter-Academy Partnership, and the International Science Council. Uh, I'm not gonna tell you too much about it because my colleague Rosan Diab from Gender Insight will specify a little bit more on this. But allow me to say that it's a first step also to survey all the different members of IEC, so including the unions. But given that this is uh, a survey that was already conducted by IAP in 2015. Uh, we are prioritizing sending out to the academies because we need to, uh, to have a benchmark with the other survey, but in the future would we'll also be sent to the unions, and we look forward to have also your input in that. Then as another item, there is uh, further collaboration with the World Federation of Engineering Organizations. Uh, we think that is always better on the other side, right? It's just the scientists, the women scientists to have it. difficulties and the women engineers. So no, it's as bad as, as, as in our um, field. And so we are collaborating more and more with the organization. And in particular, we are currently looking on how to organize an event at CSW64, which is the, the Beijing anniversary. And I hope that we can engage in conversation also how to bring 
uh, forward uh, this project in this event. And last but not the least, uh, at the Secretariat, we're currently planning a scoping meeting towards defining the next step in defining Project 4.1. And we're really hoping to engage with the coordination of this, uh, of this project and to reach to the amazing community that this project um, has created. So we will be in touch with, uh, with the coordination team of the project, but please also, those of you who are just joined us for the, for the conference, please keep an eye on the ISC website and also provide inputs on, on how maybe your organization could also contribute to the development of this project. And so I think through this project we will also have more opportunity to make the change that we all wish to see in the world. And I thank you so much for this opportunity to be with you today. Thank you.